Hi, I'm Irving. Welcome to Captain and the Marvellos. I mean, Shazam. And now, back to Shazam. Three high school-aged boys, I think they're high school, are sitting around trying to decide what to do on a lazy Sunday. Although there are three of them, the focus is on Paul and his dog, Rex. Come on, come on, come on. Come on Rex. Well, we could always go fishing. I got a better idea. Well, what is it? Go to school. Go to school on Sunday? But four, there's nobody there. That's just the point. He knows a gate they can sneak through, and once inside, they can do whatever they want without anybody hassling them. Hey, I don't know. I think we ought to... What's the matter, Paul? You chicken? Okay, let's go. Nobody calls Danny Partridge chicken. The Partridge family had just wrapped up, and this was the first of several one-shot parts that Danny Bonaducci would do over the next few years. He has lived one interesting life, that's for sure, not all of it interesting in a good way. My favorite part of the story is, today he's a radio personality right here in Seattle. My wife likes his show. I have to say I'm not crazy about it. The boys head off and Rex follows them. Cut to Billy and Mentor working a jigsaw puzzle of the Mona Lisa. She wouldn't be smiling that way if she was working on the puzzle. Ah, uh, Billy. It's not a smile. It's a challenge. Yeah. It's more like she was hiding something. Oh, like what? Like she knows there's a piece of the puzzle missing. She's waiting for us to find out. <laughs> yes, Billy, she planned it that way, just to annoy you. The elders call. Friendship is a two-edged sword, Billy. It carries advantages, but it also carries obligations. I, I don't understand. If a friend of yours saw a rainbow, but it led him into quicksand, would you warn him? Of course. Then true friendship can encourage you to go ahead, but it should also warn you when to stop. I'm not sure if I know what you mean, Elvis. You will, Billy. I think they get their kicks watching the confused expressions on Billy's face. Get everything straightened out? Nah. It's more like I've got it all rolled up. The elders were talking about friendship. They might have been talking about the price of eggs fresh from the farm for all the sense that made. No, Rex, go home. Go home, Rex, no. Go. I'm sure that's exactly what Rex is going to do. Feel free to say it with me or not. The boys are in the chemistry lab playing with test tubes, flasks, and liquids. They don't know Rex slipped in there with them and is hanging out under the teacher's desk. No, I'm Frankenstein. It was an accident. It's okay. Hey, I think we better go. Sam calls him a chicken again, but Paul has had enough. This is going to get worse, isn't it? I smell smoke. Yep, it's worse. A fire started. Let's get out of here. Put it out. There's a fire extinguisher right there on the wall. Hey, Sam, don't take that. That's not a fire extinguisher. What are you going to do with a typewriter? And what are your parents going to think when you suddenly turn up with one? If nothing else, coming up with a typewriter of your own suggests that you want more homework. Billy and Mentor are driving by and see the smoke. When they stop, they can hear Rex barking. Billy's too big to squeeze through the gate, so there's only one thing to do. Shazam! Now about that gate. Why did he do that? Why didn't he just jump over it? Dude, you can fly. You can place yourself on the other side of the gate without breaking other people's stuff. Captain Marvel heroically takes the extinguisher and puts the fire out, as well as rescuing Rex from the smoke. I'm going to guess Rex did go home this time. He's had enough excitement for one day. Somebody really messed that place up in there. What do you mean? Broken glassware, fire and smoke damage. It sounds like vandals. 
Uh, there are no more Vandals, officer. They were a northern European tribe that had lots of clashes with the Roman Empire, but they basically migrated all over the Mediterranean and absorbed into the cultures where they landed. Oh, he meant people who deliberately break stuff. Make that clear next time. Conveniently for our plot, Paul's dad owns the finest fishing resort in the area, and that's where Mentor and Billy are headed. You can park your van right here. We supply city power, water, five dollars a day. Hi, Scruffy. Hi, Scruffy. What do we have here? Pretty smart dog. You had him long? All my life. Hey, Paul, do me a favor. Ask your father to come. I want to speak to him. Okay, but he won't give you a better price. Billy recognizes that dog. And now I'm confused. Is his name Rex or Scruffy? We've called him both so far. Maybe he's like me. He'll answer to anything if you have food. Paul's dad introduces himself and says, let me know if you need anything. Oh, by the way, uh, did you hear about the excitement in town? Excitement in this town? No. Yeah, well, there was a fire at the school. A fire? When? A little while ago in the chemistry lab. Did you hear anything about a fire, Paul? No, Dad, nothing. There's a little dog. Looked just like Rex here. He was trapped inside the lab. He really could have gotten hurt. But it couldn't have been Rex. Son, do you know anything about this? No, that, nothing. It must have been some other dog that looked like Rex. Son, there's not another dog in three states that looks like Rex. When Paul says he doesn't know anything about the fire, he's telling the truth. He left before it started. There's a good chance he'd get a slap on the wrist and a little more. But he's covering for his friends, which is never a good idea when there are possible criminal charges involved. The sheriff arrives to tell them they have a suspect. Oh, uh, we hired a new custodian last week. Foreign fellow. Hardly speaks English. Seemed like a nice sort. But we found a typewriter missing. Figure he might have taken it and then messed up the place to make it look like vandals. Why would he need to? He has keys to the place. He can go in and use one whenever he wants. You're assuming that because he's foreign, he's stupid. If I may say so, Sheriff, that hardly seems enough to call a man guilty. True enough. But we also found some books in his locker. Books? What kind of books? A couple of dictionaries, part of an encyclopedia. Looks like they were taken from the library. The kind of books that might help you learn English. He's definitely a subversive. Deport him! And did you maybe look to see if he checked those books out from the library? That is a thing people do. Sheriff just stopped by. He thinks he has a guilty party. Who? The custodian at school. <laughs> Mr. Atropolis? He didn't... wouldn't do anything like that. How do you know he didn't do it, Paul? Yeah, this could ruin an innocent man's life. Thanks to the Arab oil embargo a couple of years earlier, all foreigners were suspect, especially if they were brown. And in a little town like this, you can bet Mr. Atropolis, which sounds Greek, would get railroaded. The worst part is, we still haven't learned a damn thing. Paul says, I don't know what to do. Mentor suggests talking to his dad. His father has already said that anyone who tells the truth in this family has nothing to fear. It's time to confess. Sir, I, I know that Vic and Sam are your, your best friends. Now, are they involved in this? I'm sorry. I can't tell you. He goes back to Billy and Mentor, I'm not sure why, and tells them that they couldn't resolve all of it. He thinks my friends did it. Well, did they? <laughs> Listen, I, I'm not going to fink on my friends. Fink? That's a word that shouldn't even be in our language. Well, why not? Because it's a word somebody made up. Somebody who didn't want to get caught for doing something wrong. Paul thinks it over and decides to go have a talk with the sheriff. Hey, Paul, wait up. Where are you going? Don't tell them, Paul. Sheriff's office? What for? They know I was at school. Somebody saw Rex there. Hey, look, we didn't mean it to go that far. Yeah, but it did, and you took a typewriter. Hey, I thought we were friends. There it is. Better watch your back, Paul. We are. That's one of the reasons I'm going to the sheriff. What are you going to tell him? Exactly what I know. Sam calls him a fink. Paul has had enough of that, too. Hey, how come you always call me fink or chicken? Just when I don't do what you want me to. See ya. Hey, Paul, wait up! Let's get in. And do what? So much for friendship. Elsewhere, Billy and Mentor are still trying to complete that jigsaw puzzle while arguing about Billy's music when the sheriff arrives to bring them up to date. Why he's doing this for two total strangers who only just rolled into town for a fishing trip? Well, wouldn't you like to know? So would I. I was wrong about the custodian. At the time of the fire, he was at the English teacher's house. She's been teaching him English. 
She also loaned him the books we found in his locker. But we'll deport him anyway, just on principle. Hey, a jigsaw puzzle. Oh, yeah, yeah, and a tough one, too. Oh, well, yeah, you mind? <laughs> it's a knack. Hey, <laughs> 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 go do some sheriff stuff. Why is he going in there? The safest thing he could do is go home. And I didn't realize he was a gymnast. You saw the way he took that fence. His former friends are just as agile as they come over the same gate, still chasing him. Hold that, Bob. We just want to talk to you. Please tell me he's not going to climb that ladder. They always go up. Please don't be like those guys. Thank you, but now I guess they're going to climb it looking for you. No, they're going to bump into some high voltage thingy that's so unstable a little nudge from a folding ladder can topple it. Whoever built this needs to spend a day in here with it like this. And by the way, Sam, let go of the metal ladder, you idiot! When it was all over, the town decided to make this a yearly thing for the 4th of July. It beat any fireworks display the fire department ever put on. You boys are lucky this time. You weren't hurt. Electricity is very dangerous. And you must never, never try to do what I just did. Even better, stay out of there and don't knock the thingy over in the first place. You boys wait here for the sheriff. Okay. Make sure you stay inside the power plant where it's still dangerous. You know something? Captain Marvel said we'd feel better when we talked about it. I feel better already. I'd feel even better if you put those handcuffs on me. Ooh, yeah, that's the stuff. Well, you boys better get in the car now. Mentor? Billy? Thanks a lot for everything. Paul's dad hops in and off they go. Everything is resolved. Well, almost everything. Yes, we can finally go fishing. Yeah. Billy, you do believe that it's the duty of a friend to tell another the truth, don't you? Yeah, of course. Well, in that case, your taste in music is awful. If what's playing on that radio right now is an example, I have to agree with Mentor. And I'm a Def Leppard fan, so it's not an anti-rock thing. Billy seems to listen to crap rock. I guess they couldn't afford to use any real copyrighted music, so they gave a wah pedal to a 10-year-old and said, go to it. And Billy likes it. Mentor is definitely right. Danny Bonaducci did a good job, but he sure didn't have much support. The guy who played Sam reads his lines like he is in the school play and has to make sure he remembers every word printed on recycled paper. The other boy wasn't much better. Bad acting made it difficult for me to focus on the story and the lesson. And there's one more thing I want to know. It was an accident. It's okay. Hey. What is Paul drawing? I'm Irving, and I'll see you next time on Captain Model.